Well, hello and welcome to Straight Talk on Mining, the webcast series. I may be making forward statements, so be forewarned. So we'll move on again. Module number seven. This is again from the sleeper mine. This is uh, epithermal veining and a lot of breccia. And breccia is just rock that's been blown apart through explosion, usually through a steam explosion at depth. And you can see, you can kind of piece back that piece. It would have been part of that piece and in a line going through here. And all of this yellow here is gold, visible gold. Beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous stuff. Again, this is one of the highest grade gold mines ever in history in Nevada. Beautiful stuff. So again, um, here's the diagram that we've been looking at and I have to get smart where you are in the system here and how do we narrow ourselves down to uh, what's going on? Well, we want to have evidence that the fluid's boiled and we want to know the salinity of the, uh, the fluids that were trapped in the veins to tell us if there's a possible magmatic input. So if the salinity is zero in these veins, the chances are we're looking at just ordinary groundwater that, um, that formed veins and really very, very little chance that there's gonna be any gold in it in the system. However, if we find high salinity uh, veins, that's the chance that you're lying on top of a magmatic system like here, like you have in, um, in Yellowstone Park, and chances you're going to have a gold zone at depth. So you can get smart about this because you can sample up here, like we have done at Crunchy Hill and at Yowie, to see what's down here and if there's potential for the fluids to be boiling and to be uh, rich in salinity. Now, here, uh, a lot of the quartz that you see is white or it's kind of a milky color. And actually, if you looked at it under very, very high mag magnification, it is clear, it's colorless, but it contains trillions of these little fluid inclusions. And these are bubbles of liquid that was trapped when the vein formed. So the vein, uh, you know, the stuff, as I said, was precipitating out of hot water and in some cases that hot water was trapped. Now, when it's at the surface, of course, it's cooled and it's uh, you know essentially room temperature now. When we look at it under the microscope and quite often it'll have a vapor bubble in it. It could have some crystals of salt in it. This is only 10 microns and a human hair is 50 microns across. So these are very, very, very tiny things. So why do we look at these things and what's important with them? Well we can determine, and it's very, very cleverly done, the trapping temperature, so we know if it, the fluids were boiling or not, and the salinity. Now, the trapping temperature is done uh, through, uh, we put um, a microscope section on a special stage under a microscope, which is heated and cooled. It can be heated and cooled, and what we do, we want to know the trapping temperature. So we uh, very, very carefully heat the, uh, the stage up until it homogenizes. These bubbles go away. And at that point, we know that's where the fluid was homogenous. And um, that uh, was uh, the trapping temperature. We're recording the temperature as we turn up the thermostat. And at one point, you can look down the microscope and you'll see the vapor bubble will vanish. And that's your point. You knew that, know that's your trapping temperature. Now, you can also cool the thing down. Now, we know if you have water, if you have ice, and you add salt to that ice, that you can depress the, uh, the uh, temperature at which uh, it will form ice. And of course, People throw it on uh, uh, salt on sidewalks. They, they salt the roads in the winter uh, to drop the the, uh, uh, the the temperature at which uh, the stuff will freeze. And it, it will freeze more or less around minus 10 
uh, below zero, 10 centigrade uh, below zero versus zero, right? So it gives you another 10 degrees to play with. In this case, what we do, we very carefully, um, we will uh, lower the temperature of the stage. And we want to see uh, at what stage, uh, at what point it will actually turn to ice. And we can do a back calculation to figure out what the salinity is of that fluid, a back calculation, because we know we have what's called a, a cooling curve with different salinities on it. And we can very, very easily determine uh, the, uh, the filling uh, salinity of this inclusion. Now, in the case of Yaoi, which we, what we have down in Ecuador, we have evidence of boiling and we have high salinity fluids. So we were pretty sure that there's going to be a goody zone at depth, the gold zone, which is not at the surface, and we've got to drill deeper to hit the damn thing. So where do we figure these things out? In horizontal space, where do we want to pinpoint and, and more or less put a, a bullseye on it so that we can drill it? Well, here's a typical geochemical map, and this is color-coded for uh, silver in the purple here, and you can see greater than 400 parts per billion uh, in the soils and greater than 600 parts per billion. This is telling you more or less that there is something right underneath here that is generating the anomaly the interesting uh, silver contents in the soil. And we're only going down about three feet to collect the soil. Again, we're looking, there's your scale, 300 meters across. So we're looking at a fairly wide area here. Uh, this is an extinct hot spring again. And for, um, we've also done it with another technique, mobile metal ions here, and it's giving the same result, which gives us a lot of confidence that this is real and that the goody zone is right underneath here. And we drilled here, but I reckon we just didn't drill deep enough. And we're going to go back to here as soon as we get the chance and the COVID abates a bit, and we can go and uh, and poke some deeper holes in here. Also, we intend to do uh, what's called a CSAMT survey, uh, a magnetotelluric type of survey. It's a geophysical technique, and we want to find resistive zones. We want to find zones that are rich in silica, and those are going to be our quartz vein zones. And this is a, 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 an example of a survey that was done by Irving Resources in Japan. And you can see these linear, these are sections, so they're uh, about 100 meters or so between these different panels here. And you can see they all line up here like that. And wherever the red arrows here, there's probably a, a vein that's stretching across the uh, the terrain uh, in the subsurface. And they've been drilling these things and having a lot of success. So we intend to do a similar sort of survey, and hopefully uh, we will hit the boiling zone uh, at depth uh, as well. So we're almost done here. The Vil Pilgrim Vamos Vamoseth his diggings. Uh, he drops his pick. His pan is left. He e'en neglects his pipe. He leaves the diggings far behind. His purse he holds with iron gripe grip. <laughs> Resolved to dig and toil no more, no more and dream, dreams to trust his well-filled bag upon his back of pure and shining dust. And you can see here he's got two million bucks in gold here. So he's very, very happy. <laughs> 